Okay, so I wasn't gonna do this, but let's just get it out the way. This is how I got started in woodworking. About 10 years ago, I really didn't live a healthy lifestyle. So I was always binge drinking and smoking and partying and doing all kinds of bad stuff. And I wasn't, it wasn't good. Eventually this lifestyle pretty much caught up to me and I got into a serious accident under the influence. So what happened was I was going 80 on the freeway, somehow hit the center divider and the car behind me hit me and then I spun out, he flipped over. Turns out he was under the influence as well. So I went to the hospital right away because my right hip was dislocated and everyone in that other car was completely fine and the driver ended up going to jail. Um, so we both pretty much got what we deserved and uh, luckily nobody was seriously injured and yeah. So eventually I went to court and they ordered me 144 hours I believe of community service and I happened to pick Habitat for Humanity. Now what Habitat for Humanity does is they take in donations and like furniture and home decor and any other appliances and things like that and they resell whatever they can after cleaning up and get the profit and use that money to build a house for somebody who's in need. And for all the other furniture that doesn't get sold, you pretty much have to break it down and throw it into trash. And I thought about this for a while and I was like, how are furnitures made this cheaply and why are they all throwing it away all the time? So I started YouTubing YouTube channels, started getting into woodworking videos and eventually I bought my own tools and picked the material that I wanted to use which was skateboards and now here I am. So that's how I got started in woodworking. <sighs> Honestly, the lesson here is never drink and drive, okay kids? And don't even, stop partying either. Stop wasting your time. Actually, live it up, but do it responsibly, okay? Just don't drink and drive. Oh, thank God. Hi, my name is Ben from Wobi Design and I have been making things out of recycled skateboards for the past five years. And today I wanna to make woodworking a little bit easier for you and break down woodworking into different categories so that it's easier for you to understand the entire process of making something. And as an example, I'm going to make a simple dining table for my friend using just few hand power tools. And it's going to be really easy, so let's get started. Now, let me briefly explain how I see woodworking. Woodworking is a lot like cooking. You pick the dish you wanna cook, you buy the ingredients you need, you cook the ingredients and bring it all together in one dish. And it's pretty much the same in woodworking. You design the product, you select the materials that you wanna use, and you mill them into different components, assemble them together, and finish it off by sanding and putting on a finish. And there's chefs out there who's specializing in high-end French cuisine and there's people out there who's just cooking for themselves. There's also chefs out there who's trying to keep the traditions alive and there's chefs out there who's trying brand new things and mixing all kinds of things. And it's the same for woodworking. There's people who hate river tables and there's people who love river tables. The point is, there's a variety of different fields that you could get into for woodworking and one of the easiest ways to start, in my personal opinion, is DIY stuff using plywood and simple hand power tools. So my usual answer for people who's asking how do I get started in woodworking is go watch plenty of YouTube videos, watch what they're doing, and start buying simple tools and start with the easy projects. And after you make a couple projects with few hand power tools, you're going to start realizing which type of tools that you're going to upgrade to and only you'll know because you're gonna be making the projects themselves. But I could tell you to go buy a planer, but you may never use it. You get what I'm saying? So don't listen to us. Just do whatever you want. That's what woodworking is. Do what you think is gonna make you happy. That's the point of this video. Hmm. That's hot. 
For me, the biggest joy that I get from woodworking is the instant gratification after I do something. So after I make a cut, ooh, that's crispy and nice. After I sand it nice and shiny, ooh, that's nice. This is the reason why I'm always yelling because I can't keep this excitement when it's, I did it with my hands and I feel good. I used to be not that good of a person and now I'm making nice furniture. What is there not to get excited about? So if you have been on the fence of getting started and woodworking, join us. It's really fun and rewarding lifestyle. And the community is filled with people who's knowledgeable and they're willing to share their knowledge and they make YouTube videos about it and you could pick up whatever you need to learn just on YouTube. So let's say you're ready to join this community and start building things with your hands, but you have no idea what the process is like. So let me break down woodworking into different categories so that it's easier for you to understand the whole entire process and you might start realizing what type of tools you actually need for each category. So if you watched enough YouTube videos on woodworking, you're going to start realizing the pattern when the creator makes something. So they select the materials, they mill them into different components, assemble them together, and finish them by sanding and putting on a finish. So here's how I like to break down woodworking into five different categories. There's design, material, milling, assembly, and finishing. Five. You design the project, select the materials, mill them into different components, assemble them all together, and finish them. Five. Pretty simple, right? So next time you watch any YouTube videos of somebody who's making something, remember these categories on the back of your mind. It's gonna be helpful. Now, in my opinion, design is probably the most important part of the step. If you make the design simple enough, the whole process of making something is going to be really simple. So for my friend's dining table, it's going to be very simple. It's just a dining table top with four legs sticking out. The probably the most important thing about design is that you have to figure out the dimensions correctly. Form follows function. You probably heard this before, and that's true. And your furniture needs to serve its intended purpose. So for example, my friend wants to have six people at the dining table, so I found the dimensions roughly. I always compare it using West Elm and different high-end design furniture design companies, so you could always do that too. That's a quick tip for you. And that's just the basics that you should cover for design, dimension, and what its intended purpose is. I would personally recommend making bigger furnitures like dining tables because it's easier to make rather than smaller boxes. So make a big table or bench. Bench is a lot easier too. Now, moving on to materials, there's really two different types of woods. There's softwood and there's hardwood. Softwood is usually like pine and construction grade lumber, like two by four, four by four, whatever it is. And they're usually a lot more affordable. Hardwood, walnut, cherry, maple, they're more dense, much better looking subjectively. Now, they come in all different shapes and sizes, forms of plywood, dimensional lumber, slabs, cookies, planks, strips. There's all kinds of different types of wood. But ignore all that if you're a beginner and you have no idea how to get started and listen carefully. You're going to use three quarter inch pine plywood and use that for the first five projects. It's one of the more affordable options and three quarter inch thickness is just about good for any furniture for your home furniture, just like your coffee table, table, TV console. I think people make beds out of it. Go check out hashtag Rockler Plywood Challenge. There you go. And your first few projects are just, it's not gonna look good. I'm sorry. That's the truth. I only speak the truth here. Now, after you make a couple projects, you're gonna elevate your game and you're gonna level up. And what you're going to do is you're going to start using three quarter inch Baltic birch plywood. And each layer is going to be the same thickness. The edges actually give it a really cool selling point. Now, I recommend using plywood because it's easy for you to cut just using a circular saw. Whereas if you start working with dimensional lumber, you're going to need a jointer, you're gonna need a planer, you're gonna need a table saw. It just gets really expensive. And I think it's important for you to start with plywood and work your way up into buying all these bigger tools. And of course you could buy S3S, which stands for surfaced on three sides, uh, which is dimensional lumber that's already surfaced for you. But those get really expensive and yeah, 
it gets really expensive. Wood's not cheap. So stick to using three quarter inch plywood. It doesn't matter if it's pine plywood if you like the look of it or Baltic birch plywood 80% of the time. I'm using Baltic birch all the time. Also, we couldn't be at a better time to be making stuff with our own hands. For example, Semi-Exact sells different components for benches, shelves, tables, desks, chairs. There's all kinds of different components out there and you can make your own furniture just making few cuts and just screwing them together. It's just that easy. So this is what my friend and I decided on. For the top, we're going to be using a butcher block top that we found that was the actual dimensions that we actually needed. So I actually don't even have to make any cuts and I'm going to stain it and it stains a lot better for hardwoods than softwood. So it's really good material for this design specifically. And for the legs, I'm going to be using these spider legs from Semi Exact and all I have to do is just pre-drill and screw them onto the butcher block top. Super simple. And just a quick disclaimer, Semi Exact did send me these legs and yeah, we're partners. What are you gonna do? Now, moving on to milling, this is where the tools start coming out. And this is probably the most frequently asked questions for a lot of the woodworkers out there. And if you're a complete beginner and you have zero tools, buy this. A circular saw, seven and a quarter inch to be specific, and get cordless and brushless. It doesn't really matter which type of brand you use, but stick to that same brand for any other battery powered tools, like your drill and driver, maybe a jigsaw, maybe a router, but not the sander. We're gonna talk about that later. Now, one of the most important thing about the circular saw is the blade itself. Usually the blade that comes with the saw is trash and you have to get a finer blade. And I usually have this ultra fine finish blade on at all times. And for the past five years, I have never tilted the blade and I have always kept it at 90 degrees to the base. And I never cut more than one inch at a time. If the material's thicker than one inch, I usually do it in two different passes. And that's the point, you wanna do it in the safest way possible so that you could do it for a long time. Shut up. <laughs> now, speaking of safety, I wanna thank the sponsor of this video, which is RZ Mask. You should be wearing your mask, especially at your shop. One of the biggest risks of woodworking is dealing with these fine dust particles that you're breathing in all the time. And potentially that's going to put you at risk of having respiratory problems in the future. And don't take this lightly. It's the only filter we have. Now the disposable mask that you guys all wear, which is the N95 mask, they only cover up to 95% of the particulates. It doesn't even matter because your nose is always sticking out, so it's not working at all. And another thing about these N95 masks, as soon as you put your sunglasses on or your safety goggles on, it starts fogging up and you can't see anything. And you should be wearing your safety goggles at all times when you're using power tools. Now, I have been using RZ masks for a couple years now and the main reason why I like using it is the ease of use. It's super easy to put on and off and it has an adjustable nose piece that fits comfortably around your nose. Now, it's super lightweight and portable so that I could always put it in the back of my pocket when I'm not using it and I could always take it out when I need to use it. RZ mask filters up to 99.9% .9 the particulates, blocking out small particulates as small as 0.1 micron. And as a woodworker, I highly recommend having one of these is because it's so easy to put on that you're actually going to wear the face mask. I actually used to use 3M masks before, but it's really cumbersome to put it on. I usually find myself not wearing it at all, and that's not good. So if you're looking for a comfortable and portable mask, check out RZ Mask, and they're offering 20% off your order if you use the code WOBE20. That's WOBE20 at checkout. And Christmas is coming and this would be a great gift for anybody who needs a comfortable mask that actually covers their nose. Thank you RZ Mask for sponsoring this video. Now, back to the table. I actually don't have to cut the tabletop because I found the butcher top that came real close to the dimensions that we're looking for. So I actually don't even have to make any cuts for this table. But I'm making matching set of benches, so I just have to make one cut using another butcher top that I bought. So let me show you how I make my first cut with the circular saw. First, mark a straight line where you wanna cut. 
Make sure it's parallel with the edges of the top. As for the circular saw, drop the blade about an inch from the base and do it in two different passes. The butcher block is one and a half inches thick and if you try to do that in one cut, it's going to get real dangerous and it's not safe and you might even experience some kind of kickback. Now, there's several different jigs and guys and tracks that you can use to get a perfectly straight line, but I personally recommend using no jigs at all and just going freehand. And try your best to follow that straight line and I'm pretty sure you're going to get real close to that line. As you're cutting freehand, you're going to start realizing that the blade wants to keep moving forward and it naturally wants to move straight forward. And as you're cutting, the circular saw is going to tell you how fast you should be moving. And you're going to start noticing that, oh, maybe it's going too fast or maybe I'm going too slow. And after you make the first pass, lower the blade about quarter inch lower than the material itself and try finishing the cut. The second pass should be a lot easier and you can definitely feel the saw wanting to follow the line you already cut. Now, the line you just cut is probably not going to be perfectly straight. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to sand it and just kind of get away with it. Or you could actually get another tool, which is the router, and get a perfectly smooth straight on it. Let me show you that. I just clamp down a straight edge and use a flush trim router bit and ride the bearing against the straight edge and get a smooth cut on the edge itself. And after the first pass, I lower the bit and reference off the fresh edge and finish the cut. And after just two passes with the router, I have this perfectly straight cut on the side of my butcher top. Now, since we kept the design real simple, we only have to make one cut using a circular saw and we have two benches and a tabletop. So next time somebody asks you what type of tools should they buy, just show them this video. Buy whatever makes you happy, okay? If you have the money, buy all the tools you can. But if you don't have the money, buy a circular saw, cordless, if you can, brushless and it doesn't matter which brand you buy, just stick to the same brand for any other battery operated tools like drill and driver, jigsaw, and not the sander. We'll talk about sander right now. Now, the point of finishing your projects is so that you could protect the wood. And in this step, you're going to sand, you might even be staining it, as well as putting on the actual finish itself. Now, one of the best tools to have for finishing is random orbital sanders. And in my honest opinion, if you think you're going to be doing woodworking for a long time, I would even just skip the entry level stuff and just buy the higher end sanders because you're going to be using a sander more than any other tool tools combined. And sanding takes a long time if you're doing it properly. And sanding something big as this table is going to take you hours to sand. And the battery is not going to last long, so you have to buy the corded ones. When you're sanding, that's when you want to quit. It's the worst. It's not exciting. It just feels like a duty and a task. You're not learning anything new. It's just one of the things that's on the to-do list that takes a long time. So get a good sander, like Merca. Now, let's say you're not in the position to buy high-end sanders and you just have the money to buy entry-level sanders. That's completely fine. What I do recommend is buying quality sanding pads. The sanding pads that come with the sander usually doesn't last long. And Merca has one of the best sanding abrasives and I specifically use Merca Abernet. And personally, I have this dust extractor with HEPA filter and so it's really dust-free. And because the sanding pads are made out of this mesh type of material, all of the fine dust gets sucked in through the sander into the dust extractor. I just literally have to pick up the sander and start sanding. And just a full disclosure, Merca is one of the sponsors of this channel and I use it all the time and that's the reason why I like using them and I like working with them because I like their products. So if you're interested in Merca products, check out the link down in the description below and learn all about sanding pads and different abrasives that they offer. Thanks, Merca. So for finishing, if you're a complete beginner and you don't have any tools, buy a random orbital sander that's corded. And if you think you're going to be doing woodworking for a long time, buy a higher end or luxury sander as soon as you can. And if you're not in the position to do that, buy a quality sanding pads like Merca Avernet. So let's start sanding and I'm going to keep this short because nobody likes sanding and better yet, nobody likes watching other people sand. 
First, there were some gaps and chips and knots, so I filled it up with CA glue and activated it with activator. I then start off by sanding with 80 grit sanding pads. With the 80 grit sandpaper, I'm just trying to knock off the high spots and try to make it as flat as possible. Also, there's no need to keep moving the sander and overwork yourself. You should let your sander do the work and all your job is to guide it and keep it perfectly flat. Overlap about 50% to get best results and it's going to take a lot of time so take your time put on some kind of podcast and some kind of show after you get it flat with an 80 grit sanding pad scribble the tabletop with the pencil and you're going to move up to 100 grit sanding pads and all you're trying to do is sanding off the last sanding mark you left with an 80 grit and you're going to do this for 120 150 and sometimes even 220 and I think for beginners, that's more than good enough for majority of the projects. So sand it with an 80 grit to make it perfectly flat and go up to 100, 120, 150, or even up to 220 grit to make it perfectly smooth. Now, after you sand, you have an option to stain the wood. Now, this does not mean you're protecting the wood, you're just changing the color of the wood. A lot of people like the natural look of the wood, but sometimes you have materials that doesn't look really good. So when you stain them, it looks a lot better. So my friend and I decided to go with this darker stain, and the only product I use so far is by General Finishes Gel Stain, uh, specifically the Java. And there's different types of stains but usually work the same you have to prep the surface apply the stain wipe off the excess and let it dry for about 24 hours and check out the difference do you prefer the stained look or the natural look leave a comment down below and usually for best results all you have to do is read the directions or just watch a couple YouTube videos and you'll know exactly how to do it best way possible but a lot of times people rather just ask questions and look for answers so now, after the stain is fully dried, we could finally move on to finishing, which leads us to the next big question. What type of finish should I use for my projects? So let's go over some popular options and you can pick and choose which one you want to use. And I'll tell you which one I use personally. Now, there's several different finishes out there, but I'm just going to be talking about a few of the more popular options that's more DIY friendly. First, there's two different types of finishes. There's oil-based and there's water-based. And they're both very good, durable, protective finishes. But the major difference is oil-based finishes usually ambers the wood. And some people actually prefer that because it kind of deepens the color. And I actually prefer that as well for hardwoods. Now, for water-based finishes, it does not amber the wood, and it's really good for plywood and other softwoods, like pine and construction-grade lumber. Personally, I only work with plywood and recycled skateboards, and it usually looks a lot better with water-based finishes because it doesn't yellow the wood, and it still gives you that clear color from the skateboards, whereas if I used oil-based finishes, majority of the things that I make with recycled skateboards, it's just gonna look super yellow. Now for smaller projects, you could always use spray lacquer and it should be perfectly fine. Now another popular option is wipe on polyurethane. And what it is, is it's just polyurethane finishes that gets thinned down with mineral spirits or different chemicals so that it gets put on really easily and you can build up several different coats. Now, another thing to look for in finishes is matte or satin finishes versus gloss or shiny finishes. And this all depends on how you want your projects to look. Some people really like the satin look and some people really like the glossy look. Personally, I like using satin finishes because it's a lot more forgiving than glossy finishes. Glossy finishes, if you have little tiny mistakes, you could see it clearly. Whereas satin finishes, it usually kind of hides it for you and it's a lot more forgiving. So this is what I like to recommend for beginners for finishing. Use water-based finishes for your project. Projects. 
Chances are you're going to be using some type of plywood, especially softwood plywood. And that means you probably don't want to amber the wood or yellow the wood. I don't know, personally, it makes it look cheaper, but some people actually like that. But another thing is water-based finishes dries a lot quicker than oil-based finishes. So that means you could build up several different coats in one day versus just one coat. So I'm using this product called Lus for the first time and it didn't really go according to my plan and I was trying to get this really nice finish and I did it so let me show you what kind of mistakes that I made so you might learn from this and just honestly if you're a beginner stick to water based finishes it's really nice finish and it's durable finish as well so now for the first coat you need to thin it down usually with the mineral spirits for oil based finishes and with water for water based finishes it lowers the viscosity of your finish and makes it a lot easier to put on your finish with the brush it's a lot more forgiving this way because you're building up a thin layer each time and it means it's going to dry a lot quicker as well so after the first coat i should have kept thinning down this varnish but i decided to put on a thick coat using a foam brush and didn't thin down the varnish and ended up getting these bumps. So for the third coat, I decided to put on another thick coat with the foam brush and I didn't thin it down again and I was hoping to just level it all out with the thick coat but it didn't work out that way and it just made the bumps even bigger. Now I tried to sand down the finish but I realized I started sanding down to the stain itself so, so I just asked my friend if it was okay and I kind of salvaged it in a way that is acceptable and pretty much he said okay. So this is what I recommend for beginners for finishing. Use water-based finishes for plywoods or softwoods. And if you end up using oil-based finishes, try to go for wipe-on poly finishes and build up several different coats and it should dry a lot quicker. And if you want to save some money on finishes, check out the coupon code down in the description below and get a fat discount off of all Total Book products. Water-based or oil-based, doesn't matter. They even have epoxy too. Now, finally, let's move on to assembly. Now, for assembly, you're pretty much joining two components together. The easiest way is just putting some screws on. And the tools you need for that is a drill and a driver, not just a drill. Now, the drill is great for drilling holes and pre-drilling. And the driver is great for screwing in the screws. And they're two completely different tools and I highly recommend getting both of them. And like I said before, stick to the same brand as the circular saw so that you can always swap out the batteries. Now, the drill and driver combo is essential for assembly. You could use it for pocket hole joinery. You could use it with the dowling jig. You could even do the bead lock joinery there's several different types of joinery method that you could do with just a drill and driver so I highly recommend beginners to buy a drill and a driver for assembly and if you're a homeowner you should definitely have one because I don't know you could assemble furnitures with them you could hang picture frames and things like that so you should get one and this is what I recommend buy something super light you don't need something heavy and super strong you know those guys just doing those testings doesn't matter for you because you're not doing it like that you're literally doing couple screws per day so get the lightest one possible and it doesn't matter how strong it is it's usually going to get the job done especially for you now for this table and benches all i needed to do is mark the location where i wanted to connect the legs and simply pre-drill and drill in the screws and once i had the legs on i was pretty much done and whenever you're building something, you have the need to be on top of it or lay down on top of it. So that's exactly what I'm doing here. So here it is, a simple dining table made with just few hand power tools. And this really isn't my best work, but the point of this video was trying to understand the entire process of making something and how woodworking actually works. You design the project, select the materials, build the materials, assemble different components together, and finish them. There's all types of different designers out there that's showing you exactly how to design your projects. There's so many different options for materials and components. And there's all kinds of different tools to get the job done. And there's several different ways to assemble different components together. And there's several different ways to finish your projects. 
But for beginners, I recommend starting off with simple DIY projects by Ben Ueda or Mike Montgomery or Glenn from DIY Creators. And use 3 quarter inch pine plywood for your first few projects like coffee tables, dining tables, or maybe even a desk. And check out hashtag Rockler Plywood Challenge and they have several different examples. And as for the tools, I would highly recommend starting off with the drill and the driver combo, 7 and a quarter inch circular saw that's cordless, and a sander that's corded. And these few tools should get you started. And if you want to have the complete package, get a corded router and maybe even a jigsaw. And jigsaw could be cordless. And those five tools should cover majority of the category in woodworking. And if you look at the bigger tools, they work about the same as circular saw. A table saw is just a circular saw with the fence for repeatable cuts. A miter saw is just a circular saw with a 90 degree hinge. So start out using these tools and understand the physics of how these tools work and eventually you're going to understand what type of tools you actually need depending on what type of task you do most frequently. So next time you're watching woodworking YouTube videos, try to understand the different processes, the design, the material, milling, assembly, and finish. And try to keep these five different categories in the back of your mind and check out how the other creators are doing it and try to understand different tools that they're using for different tasks. And eventually, the answer is right there and you're gonna know exactly what you need to buy. So, that's it for this video. I hope I answer a few of the questions that I always get, which is how do I get started in woodworking? What type of tool should I buy? What type of finishes should I use? And hopefully I made it easier for you to understand how woodworking actually works and just understanding the different categories that woodworking gets involved with. And I would love to know if you got started in woodworking because of me or I inspired you in some kind of way. And so make sure to write it down in the comments below and I would love to hear about it. And I really want to help other people too. Why do you think I'm making this video? Jesus. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't already, please subscribe and turn on that notification bell, like this video, comment down below the best tricks and tips that you might have for your beginners and then delete it and then write something positive because I don't care about the tips and tricks. I only care about the positive comments. Got it? Thanks again and until next time. Oh, boy.